Political survival, two incumbent congressmen seeking one seat in the next U.S. Congress. Democrat Leonard Boswell and Republican Tom Latham on why it should be theirs on this special debate edition of Iowa Press, live from Council Bluffs. Funding for Iowa Press was provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. Iowa banks know you want honest advice about how to best reach your financial goals, whether it's financing and education, buying a new home, growing a business, or funding retirement. Iowa banks, Iowa values. MyIowaBank.com. For more than 40 years, Iowa Press has brought you politicians and newsmakers from across Iowa and beyond. In 2012, Iowa Public Television brings you debates in each of Iowa's four congressional districts. Live from the Arts Center on the campus of Iowa Western Community College in Council Bluffs, here is Dean Borg. Every two years, the entire U.S. House of Representatives, 435 members of Congress, is up for election. In this election cycle, reapportionment of the congressional districts reflecting shifting population is downsizing Iowa's Washington delegation from five to four. Well, that places incumbent Republican Tom Latham against incumbent Democrat Leonard Boswell in Iowa's new third congressional district, encompassing southwest Iowa from Des Moines to Council Bluffs. And this campaign is receiving national attention because it's one of only two across the entire country involving incumbents for the U.S. House of Representatives. Both are political veterans, Congressman Boswell seeking a ninth term, Congressman Latham wants a tenth. Gentlemen, welcome back to Iowa Press. Good to be Thank here. you. And both of you are familiar with the Iowa Press format, but we're in a different setting here with an audience, in addition to our television viewers. But they've promised to watch and listen, but they won't be participating with cheering. As usual, I'll be moderating our discussion and questions on this special hour-long edition of Iowa Press. We'll be coming from Omaha World Herald chief political writer Robin Tesper. Des Moines Register political columnist Kathy Obradovich and Radio Iowa News Director Kay Henderson. Gentlemen, I want to begin by asking you a question about an institution with which all Iowans interact, the post office. Mr. Boswell, how do you fix what's going wrong at the post office? How do you fix the post office? Well, I think we probably ought to look for the efficiencies. We probably have learned a lot from Federal Express and uh, UPS. Take advantage of those and see what we can do. But I know one thing, that rural folks would like to have their post office. That's what about Saturday delivery? I think maybe Saturday delivery would be something we could think about. Mr. Latham? Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, for hosting this tonight and uh, to Iowa Western Community College, such a great, beautiful place here uh, for having us here. But uh, the post office obviously has huge financial difficulties. Uh, one problem is that they have overpaid into their pension plan for about 75 years in advance and to be able to uh, keep those funds rather than and have that go into operations would help them dramatically. Uh, I'm very concerned certainly in, in rural uh, Iowa that we lose the, the six-day service. Uh, it would, I don't think it has any benefit uh, for the post office in that that's the day that uh, UPS and FedEx uh, pay the Postal Service to deliver those packages, so it's going to cut off a source of revenue also. Mr. Boswell, would you support changes in the pension plan for the USPS? Well, I think so, yeah. I think we ought to take a look at that and see that I would guess that uh, there's always an opportunity to look at it and see if there's things to do to improve it. And as you've heard me say many times in my life, uh, let's look at it. If it's okay, leave it alone. If it's not, then do something about it. But uh, I think it's okay to look at anything. Let me just ask, would you rush to save every rural post office in that district if you're reelected? Oh, probably not, but I would certainly look it over very carefully because it's something that's uh, very important to the folks out there, and uh, I'd look at it very carefully, but I'd want to have a lot of data that we don't have now. Mr. Latham, would you defend every one of those? Well, I, I think it's, you know, the post office in a lot of the small towns is such an important part of that community. Now, whether you had shorter hours, the same postmaster maybe would work in two different locations something like that, but uh, uh, it's a very important part. My hometown of 168 people, that's a, hmm. that's a big deal in Alexander, Iowa. 
Mr. Well, my Latham, home, my hometown's much bigger. It's almost 240, something like that. <laughs> Mr. Latham, as you know, as both of you know, last year there was a historic flood on the Missouri River, flood that cost millions. Mm -hmm. In the wake of that flood, do we need to relook at the Corps' management plan? And can you give me some specifics on how you would like to see that changed? Okay. Uh, thank you, Robin, for that. That's a great question. Obviously, last year was an incredibly difficult time along the Missouri River. Uh, I was on the, the levee down in Percival on a 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and that levee went out overnight, and the devastation that that caused. Uh, we certainly, I think, have to look at the river management uh, to look, take into consideration flood control and humans first. Uh, it's been diverted the, the efforts uh, for uh, you know, fishing, uh, endangered species, things like that, but the, our number one priority has to be uh, humans. Uh, I would like to mention, Leo, last year we had the uh, uh, FEMA disaster uh, bill on the floor, uh, and I, uh, quite honestly, was very surprised. Congressman Boswell twice voted against funding for FEMA in favor of electric car, and that's been such a disaster. Uh, but twice voted against uh, funding when we had this disaster going on last year. And I'm sure, Mr. Boswell, you're going to want to respond to that. I certainly would. And, of course, there's a lot of other factors that you know, Tom, were involved in that, and it was a process in place. But <clears throat> the Missouri River is very important to us. It's a navigation source, and uh, being a, having served a lot of time in the military myself, the Corps of Engineers is a military organization. And they pretty much respond to what we ask them to do. We want navigation, we want flood control, we want uh, the many different things to, to, put, to put on their plate. And I think they do a pretty good job. They try very hard to follow and develop what we ask them to do. So and, uh, if I could interrupt you, do you think the Corps deserves any of the blame for what happened well, I, in this I life? think the Corps is willing to review. I think, I, I think it's time to review. Does someone go out and just hammer the Corps? Well, I think the Corps is willing and ready to say, okay, you, you're changing the rules around a little bit. What do you want? You want, the, you want conservation? Do you want flood control? Well, flood control is the most important thing. I believe that. I think they know that. Mr. But it, uh, it's Congress probably that's setting uh, the rules and the, the requirements on what they have to come up with in their plan. It's time to review that plan. Mr. Boswell, Mr. Latham brought up the at the vote about the electric car, you didn't address that. You said there were other factors involved. For people at home, what were those factors? Well, the factors are, is, you know, where are you going to uh, put the emphasis? And we didn't have that cleared up yet, but it's the flood control. They, they've got requirements to have maintained basin levels and things like that. And it didn't take into account of the heavy snow and the unexpected rain. And those things hadn't been thrashed through yet, but there was still time to flood. The, the FEMA was never without money. Well, what was it? Either the electric car or FEMA? The what? Either the electric car or FEMA? It was. Uh, and this was when FEMA came to Congress and said that they were running out of money because of the disasters like the flooding on the Missouri River. And we had to offset the funding that we wanted to put into disaster relief. Uh, we were taking money away from the electric car, which has been a disaster, as the, the government will tell you today. But twice, Mr. Boswell, Congressman Boswell, voted in favor of electric cars rather than helping folks here that are devastated by floods. Congressman Boswell. Well, first off, FEMA did not run out of money, and there was plenty of opportunity to take care of that. And there we are in an energy crisis trying to get the electric car going, which, by the way, it seems to be going pretty good. Well, and at the same time, we did not run out of money. I was out here as much as you were. I was down at Hamburg when they were scrambling to get that dike put up the last minute. And uh, I'm very conscious about making sure that FEMA was ready to react, and they were. And so you can uh, hang doom and gloom on what you like to do, but uh, we were able to navigate and do the things we need to do well, and still fine. take care of FEMA came to us and wanted money. They were desperate. They, and they never failed to do that. Mr. Boswell, yes. we've talked about some pretty specific issues, but I, I want to talk now a little bit about your priorities. If you could wave a magic wand and put a bill on the president's desk and know that it would be signed into law, 
what would that bill be? Well, I would put everybody back to work if I could and stop the things going out to... But legislation can't put people back to work. That, I, the wand isn't quite that magical. It's got to be It's got to be some legislation that you could put in place on the president's desk. Well, I think we'd put legislation on his desk that would be a major step towards uh, balancing the budget and making sure we're living within our means and put our country's fiscal responsibility back in control, start that process that needs to happen. Okay, that's a, that's a wish list, but is there is there one specific piece of well, legislation the that you the would want to I think balance the budget is pretty specific, okay. so I, I, you know, I don't know where you're trying to go with me, Kathy, but uh, seriously, I think that would be a major thing. People are concerned about it. Uh, again, amnesia said in how we got to, but we've got to deal with it. It's here. We've got to deal with the deficit, and we've got to deal with the debt and everybody's okay. got to participate in it, and I think that'd be a very good thing to put on his desk. I, I'd like to uh, <clears throat> get back to pay as you go. Okay. I think pay as you go is something well, that's very You gave important. me one specific thing, and we'll come back to balance, that. But Mr. Balance the budget. Balance budget, Mr. Latham. Well, I'd, it wouldn't necessarily take a president's signature, but uh, a, an amendment to the Constitution for a balanced budget, okay. uh, I think uh, is, would save us long term. And just like Iowa has to have uh, a balanced budget, the federal government should too. It's going to be very difficult to get there. In the meantime, what we've got to do is to have uh, tax policy that uh, is going to encourage uh, growth and investment and job creation. But, but so of all the things you could have, uh, a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution, absolutely. that's the one thing. Absolutely. So, yes. Okay. Hey, Thank we you. agree on something. Isn't that nice? <laughs> if you could take one vote back, Mr. Latham, that you have cast, yeah. what would that be? Well, I wish the No Child Left Behind uh, would uh, have worked out a lot better. Uh, it, uh, it had the best intentions uh, as far as trying to hold schools accountable to help kids that uh, really weren't getting an opportunity. You regret that, that, supporting No Child Well, I do, because the way it was enacted and the way that uh, it ended up with the testing and things like just simply didn't work. Mr. Boswell. Right on, I agree, I regret that very much, and we were terribly misinformed. Uh, Governor Vilsack came out and visited with uh, President Bush and our Director of Education, I can't think of his name right off the hand, but he was out there and said that the, the funding was going to follow to go with it. And so they thought that Iowa was already doing the things that they were going to call on to do, and it turned out that wasn't the case at all. And uh, I think it was a bad vote, and I wish we could, I wish we could not have happened the way it did. You know, uh, in addition to being out in this district campaigning, people have been seeing a lot of you on television. You and your supporters have been buying lots of TV time, freely criticizing each other. And I'd like to remind our audience of some of the things now that are being said. Mr. Latham, first a commercial that you're airing about Congressman Boswell. I'm Tom Latham, and I approve this message. In the last four years, 11,000 Iowans have lost their homes. Thousands more have lost jobs. But as Iowans played by the rules and struggled to get ahead, Congressman Leonard Boswell rewarded his government staff with more than a half million dollars in bonuses. Bonuses as big as $14,000 paid for by Iowa taxpayers who didn't have money to spare. Iowans struggled while Leonard Boswell spent our money on big bonuses the Washington way. Mr. Latham, why is it important that voters know how Mr. Boswell compensates his staff? Well, I think it's important to know, and it just is a, a difference that we have in our uh, the way we operate, I think, in our offices. Uh, Mr. Congressman Boswell has paid $500,000 out in the last four years in the most difficult economic time since the Great Depression. Uh, this is a time when 11,000 people have lost their homes. Social Security recipients got zero cost of living during this time, and he is pay paying out larger bonuses than he ever had. I have not paid out any bonuses since the economic downturn. I haven't even given my staff a raise because we sat down, we talked. Uh, we want to lead by example, and I just think it's wrong uh, when everybody else is struggling to give these enormous bonuses to uh, to staff in Washington. Mr. Boswell, you obviously...